All right, well, I'm here at Murray Park in Little Rock uh, for the Omega Prostate Cancer Awareness 5K. It's 5 a.m. Just got here, found the finish line. Uh, runners are coming from this direction, coming in. Uh, there is no power close. There's a pavilion over there. It's pretty good distance away, pavilion number four. Uh, currently doesn't have any power. So I've got to either run extension cords from pretty far away, the pavilions I've rented, pavilion one and two, uh, or just set up a generator. I was hoping to do both to have uh, power and also set a generator up on this side, that way there's no uh, power cables going across. But anyway, um, but I wanted to record a video just showing you race start to date. Uh, typically I wanna, I'd rather have a lot of free time casually setting up slow uh, instead of in a panic, you know, showing up a little later. So I always like to show up extra early. For as much as I'm setting up though, this is a bit later than I'd like. Um, the race was fine to, to cover a hotel, but I went ahead and decided to spend that time with the family and got up at two something this morning and drove up here so anyway I uh, want to go ahead and show you everything's in the truck tonneau is covered I uh, just want to show you what all can fit without having to bring a trailer so uh, I'll show you a picture and video whenever it's all said and done with what all we set up so all right here we go Okay, so the race just ended. I wanted to do a, uh, a wrap-up video to show what all I set up. I've actually already turned that TV off that's on this side of the arch, but uh, before I tear everything down, I want to show you some of the new equipment. Uh, now this race, just as a quick summary, they, they didn't turn the power on at the park until 10 minutes before the race started, so I ran everything from the generator. Thankfully, everything worked fine. So everything you're seeing here was, is being run off the generator. It's just a standard 2000 watt generator. Uh, so yeah, let's go through the setup. Just a panel antenna there, which, you know, if you look at the statistics, I believe that's doing the most of the work here. Uh, so I've got a TV here showing the clock. And then over here, another TV. This is a credit to uh, Greg Milby at Central Kentucky Race Management. Uh, there's a little $40 device that you can load any kind of media on, like photos or videos, and it'll automatically loop through them. So I've got a little jump drive here that's full of the race sponsors. And all you do is you hook it up to your TV and it just cycles through them. You can set, you know, how long does it cycle and different things like that. So the plan is to have this at like every race now. So again, credit to Central Kentucky Race Management for showing me that little device. Uh, again, you can buy it on Amazon for like $40. Uh, let me get a little close up view. So, and there's different brands and stuff, but this is the one I got. Just an HDMI media player. You can do a memory card or a jump drive. So, all right, so there's that. Um, now this is unique, this is different, in fact I need to stop recording on it. So this is a all-weather action camera, it's called the, uh, the Drift Ghost, uh, I got the wide edition, the XL I believe, and so it's got an internal battery that'll last nine hours. And so this is, like if you've got uh, long events, uh, you know, where you're having to juggle cameras, this might be a good solution for you, like we got marathons or, you know, uh, uh, ultra runs or triathlons or whatever where we're recording for you know six seven hours and so instead of having to like swap out camcorders and then trying to manually merge the videos together to be able to have one continuous video on youtube uh that's a long process it takes a while to do so this camcorder will last nine hours on its own internal battery but you can also charge it while it's recording so it's got a little it's got a weatherproof charging uh port here of course you could just leave that taken out if you want uh but i've got it hooked up there in case i ever need it and so, as you see, I've been recording for hours, and it's still, if you look at the battery here, it's still full battery on the left there. It may not focus, but, so yeah. So, anyways, full battery. I think it supports up to 128 gigabyte card. I can't remember, I think that's the size. So, uh, that'll record, I mean, a long time before it runs out. So, really excited about this camera. I don't have to worry about the rain or anything. It's easy to, to set up, easy to use. And what's also nice, is you can use your phone, it's got an app where you can uh, view the live feed because the reason why a lot of camcorders don't last very long is if you get one with a screen, of course the screen's using up probably most of the battery. So this one uh, doesn't have a screen, but you can uh, hook up to it with your phone and, and get the live view on your phone. And so that way you can make sure everything is lined up and looking properly. So here, you know, it's gonna get a nice view of the finishers and the arch and everything. And I've got it back far enough where the, you can see the uh, sponsor cycling and all that stuff. So anyways, Nice uh, camcorder there. Another nice thing about the camcorder is it comes with this, well, it's actually an optional accessory, but it has this remote so that you can press the button and it will start recording so you don't have to remember to like run over and press the button. 
And so this remote, uh, I think the camera cost me $114 and the remote was an extra 20. So uh, not saying it's just a simple start and stop recording button. So anyways, that's a Drift Ghost camera. And as an alternative to the camera, so that's a, a nice camera to set up and record for uh, like I said, a long time. But also another credit to Central Kentucky Race Management. Uh, they also showed me, and again, this is a program I'm familiar with. I've used it before. But you can also use a program called OBS. So like here, in fact, I need to stop recording on this one. But I'm going to leave it for now. But this is an OBS program, which is an open source free program. So if you have a laptop and a webcam, which webcams are dirt cheap, well then you can also record for an unlimited amount of time. Now I've got a 128 gigabyte SD card here. You can also buy a little you know, external hard drive if you need to or whatever to record it. Um, but with OBS, you can record. And uh, what's nice is if you look down here, here's the actual file that's being recorded in real time. So the recording is still going on. Say so it's still recording. And while it's recording, let's say I right click and you can use a program called VLC player. And this can actually play the video while it's recording. So if you needed to go back and uh, check something out, you can. So right now it's still recording and I can go back and watch any part of the video, like I said, even though it's recording. So this is a nice uh, video backup system. So you really don't even need the camcorder at all. Uh, you can use this OBS program because again, it's got more benefits. Number one, uh, you know, it's if you already have a laptop, just memory card, cheap webcam and then the free OBS program so another nice thing about it is if I were to there's an option in here to start streaming where I could stream this if, if I if a race wanted me to stream the finish line in real time on YouTube I can stream this in real time so it's just another feature that we as a timer uh, can take advantage of with a free program like OBS and so again credit to uh, Greg Milby and, and uh, Jeff Proctor at Central Kentucky Race Management for showing me this program. I've, I've used OBS before, I just never thought about using it for race timing, so kudos to them. So yeah, that's the uh, other thing. In fact, let me go ahead and stop recording on this video. Now I had this laptop also running that TV. I forgot my HDMI splitter, so I had a, a separate laptop running the TV on that side. This laptop that's doing the recording with the webcam running that uh, left display over there. So. All right, and then of course over here we've got the main public display, uh, which is connected to the RFID computer, and so that is showing the people's names and times. I need to probably shrink down the the place uh, column a little bit there, but anyways, that's showing people's names and time the moment they finish. Obviously, the RFID system is also triggering the photo, so every finisher coming across triggers the photo. Uh, and I should have had the lady stand somewhere else, but anyways, uh, it's got a photo of everybody. And you could hook that camera up to the, either the chip system or the backup system. And either one, my, my head timer likes to hook it up to the chip system, uh, the, the backup system, so that if a chip is missed, we have a photo of them. I prefer to hook it up to the RFID system because uh, that way I can walk away from everything knowing that we're still getting photos and everything's fine. Really, you can't go wrong either way. So uh, the final thing is... Uh, in the tub down here is the setup there. I brought a little mat marking tape if I needed that. Um, it's a battery backup reader, power strip, and then this box a uh, customer custom made it to put external power ports there. And then we also set up a results kiosk over here. I forgot my little USB cable so that we couldn't do auto printing. Oh yeah, no, I, they we're good. Appreciate it. Uh, so this is the results kiosk. These nice ladies here were typing numbers in. <laughs> We're typing numbers in when people finish and it prints off. In fact, let's go ahead and do one. Bib number 11. 11 search. So it shows the results there. Print. They can also do text if they want to text the results themselves. So yeah, there's what their printouts look like. So yeah, uh, I didn't have time to set up the big dome tent over the results kiosk. There wasn't uh, any real chance of rain today, so I didn't worry about it. Uh, but yeah, the moment people finished, they came through here and then walked over to the results kiosk and got their printer, uh, their sticker. Um, another thing that was new today is that everybody, the moment they finished, received a text uh, with their results. So in the software, all you got to do to turn that on is check that box right there that says uh, automatically send SMS results. So you see that only one message failed. That could have been a landline, like a home phone number line that someone gave us, uh, but 77 um, 
text went out and then only two people that finished didn't have a phone number so we have one bib number here that we're not sure exactly it didn't belong to anyone so it could have been a tag that was programmed incorrectly or something but anyways everything went great uh so all of this well let me show you what's actually at the uh, starting line and uh, the registration area because that's a whole different setup i got over there so Okay, so while they're giving the awards away, one thing I want to do is send everyone a text letting them know <clears throat> because I didn't bring a tub today like I usually do. So I'm going to send everyone a text. I'm going to highlight everybody. Just clicked on the first one, held the shift button down, highlighted the last one. I can right click and do uh, send SMS. So now I can type in a message. Let me go ahead and try to do that. I got to put my phone down for a second. So let me, let me type it and I'll hit record again. Okay, so just a quick note that says, uh, let me go over to the home. It says, reminder, please return your tags at the finish line if you haven't already. Um, great race, everybody. All right, great race, everyone. So I'm going to hit send. And now that's going to go through and is sending everybody a, a text. So some, there it goes. So, while everybody's still here, they just now received a text reminding them to return their tags if they haven't already. Uh, that again, keeps our costs down, keeps them out of the landfill, so might as well get them back if we can. Okay, before I leave the event, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and upload the photos. So, I go to Run Sign Up, open the race page on the left side, go to Photos, and go to Upload Photos. I've already taken the memory card out uh, of the camera and plugged into the laptop here. So, I'm going to pick on today's day. <clears throat> I'm going to do Finish Line. And then here it says, click here to add photos or drag and drop. Uh, since I'm using one hand to hold the phone, I'm going to go ahead and click on here. And I'm going to jump to the memory card under the this folder. Let me sort it by date descending. Actually, I'm going to do ascending, so make sure they stay in the right order. All right, so I'm going to go with the first one for today's date. Again, if you had cleared out your memory card before this, it would have been fine, but... So, I'm going to hold the shift key down and go down to the bottom. Alright, so that's all of today's photos. Simply going to drag and drop. And so now those photos are being uploaded to Run Sign Up. And what's nice is Run Sign Up uh, automatically maps the photo to the person if the bid number is visible. So, actually, I'm going to hit on, click on Upload Photos. So, there they go. Alright, while I'm tearing down the finish line, the photos will be uploading. And I can do the same for the video. Um, I might do that because it's free open Wi-Fi here and it's pretty fast and so I might get the video uploading too. That way maybe by the time I get home everything is up on Run Sign Up. But anyways, I just want to show you the photo upload process. So here at the registration slash check-in area, we had a couple ladies that were sitting here, three or four I think. One of them was doing the uh, race day registration and left the laptop here for her. So anyone that needed to register, she was putting them into the system using the on-site registration tool. So instead of uh, athletes typing their own information in. She was simply asking their information and typing it in. That's, uh, I think, a much faster process than having a person, you know, that's never, each individual person sitting down trying to put themselves in if they're not used to the website can take a long time. So having one person that's familiar with it, it's a, a much quicker process. So anyways, we had one person doing registration and then they'd move over to the check-in area. And so I had a couple of ladies here with the phone uh, checking people in, assigning bib numbers and giving them tags. And now I provided some instructions so that, you know, the volunteers when they showed up would know what to do. So here's the check-in. Uh, you know, if you're going to do the check-in, download this app. Here's the password that I put in for this year. And then, you know, select add manager configuration. That way they can make any changes they need. And then those doing race uh, day registrations on their own phone can follow these instructions. You know, scan this QR code, type in the password. And so that is the instructions I left for uh, the ladies here. And then I set up a TV also that's got, you know, hey, scan here for results or here to register. And then I've got other things. I think it's got like, uh, yeah, the course map. And then other instructions like how to wear tags and stuff like that. So I can't remember what all I put on this, uh, but I'll let this sit here. So yeah, one of them is just our kind of what we do and what we ever, you know, all the services we offer. And while that's working, uh, yeah, so here's how to wear the tags. And I think I got another slide that tells how to return them and all that stuff. So, and then over here, I've got a TV who just was scrolling results. So while I was timing the race, I was hitting the uh, sync button to push the results up to run sign up. And that is what runs this. So this laptop down here, it's got the uh, run sign up live leaderboard feature. So that's a 
pretty easy thing to set up, but it's one of those things you want to practice before race day for sure. Um, but it works great. So it's, the moment results go up, they automatically refresh here, and then you know you can have these TVs doesn't matter anywhere in the world, and these are scrolling results. So um, I didn't realize also that I need to set the resolution a little lower or something. See the times are cut off there at the end a little bit. Um, but anyways. We didn't have power until about 10 minutes before the race started, so some of this was a scramble to set up, just kind of quick. Now, again, like I mentioned at the finish line, uh, I am using this to simply cycle through the photos. Uh, so you load a $40 device, hooked straight up to the TV with the HDMI cord, and it works great. So, all right, well, that is what we had at the uh, registration area.